Um, my guy feels so sweaty. Girl. Hey there. Hello. Welcome back to Mr. Larry's Craft Show. Today we are talking about decoupage. There are three things that I think you should know about decoupage. And one of them is that I will always say decoupage. We're <laughs> talking about decoupage, decoupage, decoupage. I'm sorry if that's offensive to any French speakers. <laughs> it's offensive to English speakers too, I'm sure. Let's... Thing number one. Let's talk about thing number one. Decoupage is a French word that means to cut paper. And decoupage is a craft that has been around for a very long time, like most of our other crafts have been. Um, and this one is one that's super easy to do, like most of our other crafts have been, and pretty inexpensive to do, like most of our other crafts. Decoupage. Decoupage originated as a form of tomb decor made of cut felt for Siberian nomads. These nomadic decorations predate Christ. The craft was eventually brought to China as early as the 12th century, where cut paper was used to decorate things like lanterns, windows, and all sorts of things. Lacquered furniture featuring decoupaged art of the time became very prevalent in the 17th century. It was termed la art del povero, or the art of the poor, because it was inexpensive to make, although it was very time consuming. Decoupage at this time involved using several coats of lacquer that had to be sanded between each one, so it wasn't a craft that everyone enjoyed just yet. By the 18th and 19th centuries, it flourished as both an art form and as a hobby for distinguished ladies. Which brings us to thing number two. Picture it, Atlanta, 1967. Enter Janet Whetstone. Janet decides that she wants decoupage to be a lot easier than it is. She revolutionizes the world of crafting by introducing the first water-soluble decoupage medium, which means no more sanding between layers, it dries a lot faster so you can work more quickly, and it really just revolutionizes everything. Did I say revolutionize already? She revolutionized it. The practice and the product grew worldwide from there. As you've probably seen it or heard of it before, and most likely in this variety, which is gloss. Although the product comes in a huge variety of different finishes and textures. Um, she really changed, she, cha she changed the game up, man. She changed the game. That brings us to thing number three. My personal affinity for decoupage comes from the artwork that I do. Most of my paintings feature some kind of collage work. Usually I find things that are old and incorporate them into the paintings. This is a way for me to give them new life and find some beauty in something that has been used or discarded. So a lot of my work features old stamps, uh, newspaper clippings, checks and old bills. I use a lot of old found metal and I really like to just combine all of these things together and make something that really speaks to me. So today our project of decoupage is just that. You'll take whatever you like and put it together into a beautiful work of art like this tray that I've made for whatever you want. <laughs> so your project might be something completely different than this tray that I've made, um, which is perfectly fine. Decoupage can be used pretty much anywhere uh, and Mod Podge is a wonderful product to use with. I believe there are other glues out there, but this is the only one I know. So that's my advice to you is to get yourself some of this stuff and then let's get started. So first we're gonna start with this tray that I bought. I got this for just a couple dollars at the craft store. I also have some feet that I'd like to paint and then glue onto the bottom of the tray just to give it a little lift. I have an assortment of paint brushes. Um, I recommend a brush with bristles as opposed to a foam brush. I got some washi tape and some metallic colors and I think that they might show through the Mod Podge. I also have some stickers, some magazines, a little bit of sandpaper and some acrylic paint, and of course the Mod Podge. Now you can use any finish you like. I'll be using the gloss variety for this project. The first thing I wanna do is remove any sort of labels or stickers, and then just sand the edges of this box to a nice smooth finish. It doesn't need to be anything incredibly intense. I just don't want there to be any sort of splinters, and I wanna give the paint and the Mod Podge a nice smooth surface to adhere to. You'll want to paint the surfaces of your box, um, any surface that is going to get color. I recommend painting white underneath first. This will really help those colors be vibrant and full um, saturation. From there, I've left the middle empty because the Mod Podge is going to go there. So it's really not necessary to paint it. Um, I'm also going to paint these feet and then I'll go in with my colored layers. Now this box, I'm going to make the interior edge one color and then the outside a different color. Just take your time. 
um, use a nice brush that gives you some flexibility and um, be gentle. I found a piece of felt that I wanted to put on the bottom of the box to give it a nice finish. I'll cut out some holes for the feet first and then I'll glue all of this to the bottom of that box. I'll adhere the felt using Eileen's tacky glue. I recommend that you use it for anything that needs to be adhered that's cloth-like, fabric, anything like that. Um, and then I'm just taking a brush and going over to make sure there aren't any lumps or bubbles under there. I'll be using Omni Stick, which is sort of like E6000, to glue the actual feet onto the bottom as well. The next thing I need to do is select my ephemera. I'm gonna go through my magazines and clip some large, pretty, colorful things and some small, colorful things. I'm sort of going with this neons and 90s sort of color story <laughs> based on the Lisa Frank stickers that I have. But I want to use a lot of flowers and anything that just catches my eye. You may use clean cut edges or torn edges. It really is up to your preference. You may use both of them in the same piece. It really just depends on what you want to do. God, she's gorgeous. I can't tear this out. I just gasped and I'm going to put this magazine away now because I don't want to do any damage. <laughs> so I'm going to cut out my flowers. Uh, I'm just kind of roughly cutting around the perimeter. You may use an X-Acto blade for this instead of scissors, whatever you're comfortable with. The next step that I like to do is to put down a very thin layer of the Mod Podge where my first piece is going to go. This is the gluing down step and then from there, once I place the image, I'll glue on top of it as well so that it seals it onto the surface. Mod Podge is not incredibly repositionable because it dries quickly. So if you do make a mistake, you'll wanna work quickly to try and reposition your work. Um, otherwise it'll start to dry really quickly and then it'll dry quickly. <laughs> keep your brush strokes smooth. I try to keep everything going in one direction just to keep it looking neat. I found this Mod Podge squeegee that's really helpful. I don't even know where it came from, but I just happened to have it in my little craft room. And I use it to flatten out any of the pieces and to scoop the glue around and just kind of spread it more evenly. And it has been a lifesaver in this project. So I recommend getting something like that. You could probably use a credit card or just a piece of stiff board as well and have it work very similarly. I'm painting the surface, applying the image, and then painting on top of the image with the Mod Podge. It's really simple, and that's the whole thing. I'm gonna to continue to do this until the bottom is filled to my liking. Um, I'm gonna add some stickers and some other cutout magazine pieces, and then I'll probably add some of the washi tape toward the end. I saved this sticker for last. I got it from Target recently and I just think it's cute and fun. And I sort of wanted it to be the centerpiece of this tray. This washi tape is metallic, so I'm wondering if it will show through the Mod Podge. Um, I can tell you though, since I'm recording this after I made the video, that it does, and I'm very happy about that because that means you could do things like gold leafing and use other kinds of metallic papers underneath your Mod Podge. 
I'm using um, just a little bit of glue and this pencil to help me push things down and the um, Mod Podge squeegee to, to help me get this tape into place. But it's actually a lot easier than I expected it to be. The washi tape is very thin, so it accepts the Mod Podge really easily. I've placed all the tape and all of the images on the bottom, so now I'm just gonna cover the entire tray with the Mod Podge to seal the design underneath. I'll then continue around the edges of the tray and the exterior as well. And I may do two or three coats of this, depending on how it looks after it dries. And here is the finished product. You can see that the Mod Podge made a nice consistent coating over the whole piece. It still allows for the metallic tape to shine through, which is my favorite part. And um, overall, I'm very, very happy with this thing. I'm pretty sure I was channeling Raven Simone when I made this. Like this would totally be in Raven Baxter's bedroom, right? <laughs> it's 11.05 and I'm already thinking about what I'm gonna have for dinner. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope that you had a good time and learned something new or maybe rekindled a passion for something that you forgot you liked to do before. I will see you next Friday. Same time, same place, all that stuff. Bye.